young survivors. It's cold this morning. So I've got the 8 horsepower gas engine running at 2,000 RPM. The alternator spinning at 4,000 RPM. I've got the data logger installed and I also have the rheostat installed in the enclosure. I need to paint it up and make it pretty, but I'll show you how it works. Right now, it's running on the internal voltage regulator on the alternator. So it's 12 amps, and I'm gonna pull this switch until about 12 amps, and I'm gonna turn this dial up and watch what happens. We've got something that works. So I can show you the rheostat. I got one shipped for 32 bucks. They run anywhere from a hundred um, to two hundred dollars. And this one's a memcore. And I got it on Amazon from an electronics company that had a new old stock. So I have the data logger installed it's got a switch that turns it on and off so it's not using power but it's uh, 0.02 watts not a big deal so it could stay on it wouldn't matter so i have on this side i have the shunt and that's just on the negative side so the bo i bolted it through so the shunt could be held on the inside and it's just negative and on this side over here, uh, those you see those two screws there. That's holding a fuse holder, and there's a 100 amp fuse there. And then the power coming off the positive side, it comes over through a, uh, I think it's a one amp fuse, going to this switch that controls this. So this is fused. And then these lines coming down, and yeah, you got a short right across these, so I'll probably put something, some kind of covers over these, and so nobody can set a wrench up there. But that's bolting through uh, from the um, shunt coming up to the negative side, and then the positive side, it, it's all bolted with lugs on the inside. And my plan is to have it where I can run the voltage regulator that's in the alternator and that'll get my batteries up to about 95% full pretty quick but since that's a 27.3 voltage regulator and my system absorbs at 30 volts now I can come over here when I sense that it's close to that I can come over here and pull the switch out and then I can adjust this up where I'm seeing the voltage that I want and the current that I want uh, to run the absorb cycle on the batteries, which usually when I'm uh, absorbing, you're seeing it starts absorb, it goes down to about oh, 14 amps or so, and when it gets to eight amps you know, at 30 volts, the solar charge controllers uh, kick it over to float. So this is a manual way. Now what if I start this engine and I want to leave the house? I'll just leave that switch in and it'll all run automatically off the voltage regulator. The idea of doing it this way manually, uh, though I plan on getting 130 amp for that and changing this engine out to a diesel that I have that's the same bolt pattern as this. It'll bolt right in, shivs and everything. Uh, the plan of doing this was if I had uh, quite a bit of solar through the day and thought that I was going to finish out my absorb say I'm on my second or third day before I've come to a full 100% charge 
and the solar got it close and then the sun went down or the fog came in or got cloudy or whatever I can come light this motor off and pull this out and adjust the current here and manually finish my absorb now this diesel will do that too through the inverter charger but that's a $220 motor that's a $3,000 motor it makes sense to me to leave this for when I need it and I bulk the batteries often with this um, but we'll see how this goes if this idea is working I'm going to switch it over to uh, diesel and look at the fuel economy doing it that running at 2000 rpms and tell you where this idea came from I was searching the internet and I found back in the 60s um, Winco made a generator it was a 16 horsepower single cylinder Briggs and Stratton a four pole generator head 4000 watts so basically by cutting the uh, RPM in half the 16 horse was only able to produce 4,000 watts. But as you know, that's way up over 10,000 watts at 3,600 RPM. So it got me to thinking, if that works with a 16 horse at 1,800 RPM is 4K, why couldn't I do an 8 horse at about 1,800? 2,000 is a little bit better and get 2K out of it. Perfect. Just what I needed. All right. I hope this helps somebody. Uh... The uh, connections on the back of the alternator are simple. It would be a lot easier to show you on this Delco 10 SI because there's more light. Incidentally, a guy at Back Home, Backwoods Home Magazine, uh, been off grid since the 70s, he's logged 13,000 hours on a 2.2 flathead Honda without rebuilding it. Isn't that amazing? He's the guy that came up with the idea of using a 25 ohm. I wasn't convinced it was going to work for me because he had a 12 volt system and I have 24. So I tested it and made sure and then bought one and we're good to go. So this is a Delco 10 SI. And you see down there about the center of the screen, you see a D slot. That's right there. And if you get a Delco 10 SI, and we won't be able to see it here, but inside there, there's a flag terminal, a little spade terminal that sticks out, and that's a test port, and it sticks out of the side of the voltage regulator. So when you put a, a probe in here, a screwdriver, and short that uh, little spade terminal out to ground, it full fields the alternator. So what I did is I hooked a wire on that terminal, and I brought it out, ran it through the rheostat and then back to ground and so when I do that it turns the voltage regulator uh, out of the loop and I'm in control of the field via a power handling rheostat now I don't know how long it'll last I don't know the internal workings of the voltage regulator the reason of doing it this way was twofold one it was really simple Two, it leaves the voltage regulator being fully automatic intact. Anyway, I hope that helps. Again, I am not an engineer. I don't know what I'm doing. Do any of these things at your own risk. Just trying to get some ideas out there. I searched the internet and I just simply could not find any videos out there that really explained uh, what was going on. What some folks do is they bring two wires out of the brushes and the brush is what transfers the power to the field like a slip ring. And they're grounding one brush and then the other brush they're putting power to it through a rheostat on the positive side. But then you don't have a voltage regulator when you need it. So we're just playing around. I wonder if the sun will come out today. Sure hope so. Have a blessed day folks.